Kia. Traffic and Parking Commission meeting. Uh, if you're not satisfied with a decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may ap appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Looking today to approve an approval of today's agenda, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved. Looking for approval for the minutes of the February 13th meeting. Everybody have a chance to review these. Is there a motion to approve? We have a first. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Any comments? Otherwise, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The men, they have been approved. Thank you. Approval of the consent agenda. Um, staff has some comments about the agenda. I think everybody has some things marked on their agenda in red. I've been advised that staff would like to pull the items in red and defer those because some additional information has come forward. Is that correct, staff? Uh, we were just going to make those to regular agenda to okay. have an opportunity to discuss and tell to you. Discuss what. those? Okay. Yeah. So all the items marked in red we'd like to pull from the consent agenda. Could I get a motion to pull those items, please? A uh, motion to move. Is yours not marked? It would be good to specify which ones could the audience. Okay, well, let me go through those. Thank you, Council. All right, we would like to remove to regular business. Uh, these are authorization of new smart meters at multiple locations, north and south side of Park Plaza from 31st Avenue North to Omen Street, yeah, yeah. north and south side of Park Plaza between 31st Avenue North and 25th Avenue North, North and south side of Nelson Mary Street between Reverend Kelly M. Smith Way to Rosa L. Parks Boulevard. North and south side of Nelson Mary Street between 11th Avenue North and North, North Gulch Greenway. North and south side of Lifeway Plaza between 11th Avenue and George L. Davis Boulevard. The north side of Lifeway Plaza between 11th Avenue North and 10th Avenue North and south side of Lifeway Plaza at 10th Avenue North. East and west side of 11th Avenue North between Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard and Lifeway Plaza. North, south, north side of Patterson Street between 22nd Avenue North and 21st Avenue North and between 20th Avenue North and 17th Avenue North and the south side of Patterson Street between 19th Avenue North and 17th Avenue North. I get a motion to move those items to regular agenda. A motion to move those items to regular agenda. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Those uh, items have been moved. We'll discuss those. Okay. Chair, All right. May I ask a point of clarification? Yes. What's your question, please, um, ma'am? Regarding those uh, items that we were just moving to the regular agenda um, versus the ones that are staying on consent, I just wanted to, as a point of clarification, ask staff, does that address the items that uh, there was some concern expressed particular to the Capitol View development? Is that is that catching all of those? Okay. I just wanted to make okay. sure. Thank yes. you, sir. All right. Okay. All right. The remaining items, we'd like to have consent agenda unless anyone has a request to withdraw those to the regular agenda. Okay. Not, I'm going to read the items for the consent agenda. That is authorization for new smart parking meters at multiple locations. The west side of Reverend Kelly M. Smith Way from Nelson Mary Street to Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard. The south side of Gay Street between Reverend Kelly M. Smith Way and Rosa L. Parks Boulevard. 
the north side of Clinton Street between 11th Avenue North to 12th Avenue North, the south side of Clinton Street between 12th Avenue North to 14th Avenue North, the north side of State Street between 23rd Avenue North and 22nd Avenue North, the south side of State Street between Louise Avenue and 22nd Avenue, the north and south side of State Street between 18th Avenue North and 17th Avenue North, the north side of Murphy Avenue between 21st Avenue North and 20th Avenue North, and the east side of 22nd Avenue North between State Street and Patterson Street. Those items on the consent agenda, is there a motion to approve? So moved. We have a first, is there a second? second. We have a first and a second, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, those have been approved. Okay. All right, staff, if you could discuss the items we move to regular agenda, please. Good afternoon, Director. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. Um, if I could, I'm just going to go down the list as he pulled off. Um, 4.01.01, um, which is the north and, south, north and south side of Plaza, Park Plaza from 31st Avenue north to um, Almond Street. Uh, there is a future uh, greenway that's being planned that is already planned. It's actually in design. It'll be moving into construction. Um, we don't have the exact date, but they feel they'll be in construction in about three to four months. So we we could install the meters, but then we would pull them back out once they go into construction. So we wanted to bring that to attention. Uh, there is some confusion on the north and south side of Plaza Park between 31st Avenue and 25th um, because the Greenway actually connects at 31st and then moves over to Charlotte. So that actually can move forward and would ask that that particular uh, request um, gets um, moved forward. But there was a bit of confusion. And then that was 4.01.02, just as an FYI. So 4.01 was a future greenway, 0 0.02. They thought the greenway continued down that, but it does not. It actually connects at 31st and then moves over to Charlotte. So I just want to, for the sake of conversation. Then... Um, Councilman, um, woman, your request about the concern with Capital View, that is the 4.01.05, um, 4.01.06, 4.01.07, um, and 4.01.08, and 4.109. Those are all related to Capital View, and we ask that we could get that defer for one month so that we can have the appropriate conversation with the businesses and make sure we address their concerns. And then toward the bottom, which is uh, 4.01.15 and 4.01.16, those two uh, particular areas are also um, cited for a future um, bikeway plan. However, that bikeway plan is not for another uh, uh, year and a half to two years. So we would ask for permission to be able to meter them and then at a later date be able to remove the meters when the bikeway program comes forward. So in essence, we're asking for something a little bit different here where we can put the meters in and then when the bikeways come, we pull them out and we don't have to bring that back before you at a later date. So thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Um, I think, Chair, I would just, again, point of clarification or point of order, just how are we going to move through them individually? Yeah, what, what I was okay. going to suggest is, my suggestion is that the items related to the capital view 4.01.05 to 09, we do as a block, and I would ask for a motion to defer those for a month. Uh, so moved. Okay, we have a first. Is it? We have a second. All in? Any any further? Yes. I, I guess I do just uh, have some questions in that regard. Yes. Um, I, I appreciate that, you know, as we've got um, our smart parking program coming in and we've got the kiosks and we've demoed those and then we're kind of starting to move into the areas where we are having paid on-street parking. And I know that those were kind of coming out in waves. Um, I, I wonder if, uh, Director, um, just by way of deferral, whether that be um, uh, Chair, you know, 
one meeting, two meeting, I, I hear you asking for one. Um, I, I just, I want to understand the, the notification process um, for um, adjacent uh, uh, businesses um, and or I guess in a situation like a, a, a capital view where there's a larger kind of full scale development and there may be certain um, obligations with tenancies about parking and, and so forth. Just kind of how it works from a from a process standpoint, please, um, before um, proceeding with the deferral. Yes, and thank you very much for that question. Um, this is a lesson learned. I want to put, put forth to the commission um, as we move forward when we're moving into areas such as this, where there is, is there is there are meters that surround it, but not in this area so tight. Uh, we will be conducting public meetings before we actually move forward, informing them that we're looking at um, installing meters. This is going to be the time limit. This is also going to be the hours of enforcement, um, and then to address our concerns. So we put the cart in front of the horse here. Um, and um, But as we move forward um, and we're expanding this and we do not have a concentrated number of meters like we have in Capitol View, uh, there's only a few spots like this. We will be hosting public meetings before we even put it on the agenda. So we got ahead of ourselves on this one. Okay, well, if Chair, if I may ask a follow-up question. I I appreciate that. I am I am more actually just in a space of notice. Um, I don't know if you necessarily need to have a public meeting about it installing meters within the right of way. So I would ask that we kind of consider, um, I think I think it's uh, fair for, uh, you know, a development that did build streets, does have garages, does have certain, you know, uh, obligations as to tenants and otherwise, that there's a kind of a notice um, provision. But um, I, I, I don't, colleagues really want to get us in a space where we have public meetings about, you know, implementing these respectfully. I just, I want to kind of, you know, uh, consider that, you know, yes, in a rollout, you're going to get, you know, you're going to have <laughs> yes. a few missteps. I, I appreciate that. Um, but I think they do afford us the opportunity. So let's not swing the pendulum too far the other way, right. I guess is what I'm saying. I would so. ask for some flexibility, council member. I think there are going to be times, and I agree, so our process will be that we'll send out notice that you're actually going to be, we're going to be installing meters. We're going to TMP um, and, uh, or we'll be installing meters and this is the date we're going to go. This is how we're looking to roll it out and everything and the number in which they can call. But I do feel there's going to be situations where we do need to hold public meetings and have a little bit more broad conversation with the business communities and not just go in with a notice. So I would ask for a little bit of flexibility, but I agree. Uh, and we are definitely doing that now as we move forward. We got excited. The first rollout, we had no problems. So we got really zealous. So, um, but, you know, good lesson learned. We're stepping back. We're, we're, we're learning our lessons. We're reevaluating and we are going to move forward. But I would ask for some flexibility in that. Because in this case, the community, the business community would like to have a conversation. Oh, I think that happens to the best of us. So. Thank you. Um, is there a, we have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Is there a motion to the further side for a month? We have a motion. We have first, second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So we're going to defer that set of items. All right. The next item is we'll take these up one at a time is 4.0101. The north side, north and south side of Park Plaza, where there may be a greenway. I, yes, sir. It appears that the recommendation is maybe to defer this one more indefinitely. Well, um, I need to have a follow-up conversation with Parks. This was brought to my attention late Friday that they were actually in already in design for a greenway. Um, so I want to understand their construction schedule. So what I would ask is for some leniency that you do approve it, but give me the flexibility of not maybe installing any meters depending on the time frame in which the greenway is going to be constructed. Okay. So if the greenway is going to be constructed relatively soon, it's really not worth our effort to put it out there. But if it's going to be a six to one year process, I would recommend we put it out there. So I'm asking for approval, but then if the greenway happens, we would have the okay. ability to say no. Sounds like an approval with a contingency. Someone like to make that motion, please. Motion to approve with, with contingent on um, contingent on the greenway. Okay. We have a first. Is there a second to that second. motion? We have a first and a second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, Councilman. Um, thank you, Director, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, 
context from hearing your comments earlier also then about 40102 and how those are kind of um, working in, in concert with each other. Um, I think I just want to um, understand a little bit more um, the, the larger context of the Greenway, which, which Greenway this is, which connection it is making. Um, you know, you mentioned there's, uh, you need to hear from Parks a little bit more about uh, what the time frame is. Yes, and so, um, you know, you and I have, have spoken in the past about, you know, a little bit of the, the disconnect from a process standpoint mm -hmm. of what Parks is doing, whether on their roadways, pathways, adjacency, public right of way. And I think we as a city colleagues have had some challenges around, um, you know, greenways are absolutely with our park system, but greenways are also transportation. And where we have those intersections, we've had some kind of fits and starts. And so um, I, I think if we could, before I vote to support, um, and I apologize, the motion was a deferral <laughs> contingent on. And, uh, the motion was approval with contingency. Okay, based on based on the timing of the okay. greenway. greenway. I appreciate that. So before I would vote for that, I would need to understand a little bit better how this fits with the next item, how it fits with your you know, your greenway conversations you were having with parks, whether in this particular location or just more generally. So thank you very much for that question. Um so this is part of the 440 greenway. Um, and it does connect with um, the greenway and bikeway that actually is on 31st and then um, actually connects over to the bikeway program on Charlotte um, Pike. So this is providing a connection and then it actually that part of the greenway terminates in the park um, that is on the north side where the dog part is as part of Centennial Park. So um, it is part of it. The reason why I asked for the flexibility is um, I am going to ask for the for you to support moving forward for um, Park Plaza from 31st to 25th because that does not um, is not part of the bikeways program um, and we will not be moving that would actually would be a parking and if it is going to be taking a little bit longer if we throw all the on street parking happening along Park Plaza below and not above it can create a little bit of chaos and so but if they're going to be moving pretty quickly into the construction we're not going to have that chaos. So I just haven't had a chance to have that conversation with the director about the timing um, of the greenway to understand whether it should be a go or no go. So by the time we get out there, get it done, get it rolling, I just want to make sure I'm not having a conflict of parking because what I don't want is all the cars because now we have paid on street. Everybody try to move up into this non-paid area. So I was just trying to keep that flexibility in place. That's the reason I asked for that. I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank all right. you. All right. So we have a motion. We've had discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That 4.0101 has passed. Okay. 4.0102, the north south side of Park Plaza between 31st Avenue North and 25th Avenue North, you have indicated that could move forward. Yes, sir. We are requesting that that move forward. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. We have a motion to, to approve. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Okay, discussion. Council member. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, in a similar vein to my question on the other, and I recognize they're interrelated, um, this is a massive amount of right away. I mean, you just look at this mm -hmm. like you can land an aircraft through there. So um, <laughs> can I inquire as to from a design perspective as you all are thinking again about these sort of parks and public right away intersections. Um, you know, you've, you've got office uh, on one side, uh, a public asset on the other. Um, from a design perspective, you know, I know we've kind of funded this bikeway, mm -hmm. um, but how are you all making the determination relative to on-street parking if it's a, you know, dual-way bikeway on one side, if it's one way on each side, and can you share with the commission how you're making those decisions in concert with parks right. about kind of, you know, best practice, safety, all those things. So actually the bikeway is not going to be coming down this portion of Park Plaza. It actually is further to the north and um, hooks up at 31st. So when, um, so when you're at 31st, the, the greenway will come down to 31st and then 
uh, at 31st, it actually takes a left turn and then it connects down Charlotte Pike. So there's actually the greenway, to, there is the bike protected bike lanes and the greenway that's already built on 31st and connects to Charlotte. So the bikeway is actually not going down this street. So that's why we're going with the on-street parking. This is actually designed for on-street right now. This is act, uh, the on-street will allow us to better organize it. We have a lot of folks that just park in unsafe areas and hatched areas and all of that. So this is going to allow us to give a little bit more context to the street from a parking perspective. If, if I may share it by way of follow-up question, um, nobody wants to bike on Charlotte Pike, all due respect. Um, this is a massive roadway adjacent to a park, nice and flat and open and wide and could be protected. And so I, I want us to optimize our existing okay. assets, but I also want us to be realistic about who's going to bike where. Um, and I also want us to provide the most direct routes that we can, colleagues, for people biking. We don't want to, oh, dip down oh, here. Definitely. But I mean, most of what people do in our city now is they piece things together because I feel safer here and I've got to cross there and then oh God, I'm going to be on Charlotte for one block and, you know, take my life into my own hands. So um, I, 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 I am going to support your recommendation, Chair, but I, I, I do want us to... Uh, What's the question? My question, Chair, is whether I'm, I'm asking points of clarification for understanding because I'm not sure if I want to support this motion or not unless I understand from NDOT there are conversations about optimal bike routes in this vicinity because as I look at this street and I've talked to other people, they feel like this is a bikeway that or pathway that they, you know, they just sort of share the road, right? There's right. not a specific bikeway provision. And I'm trying to inquire with the director if there's sufficient right of way if we were to put in bikeway infrastructure one side, the other related to parking. So those are my questions, okay. Chair. So thank uh, you. thank you for that clarification, clear. Council Member, Mr. Chair if I could please respond. Um, there is ample room and I would say it is something we can, we would definitely have on our radar. It's not immediately on our radar. Um, and I appreciate that input because I am always looking for that insight coming back. Um, and we do want to create the most, the, the routes that people feel the, the the safest on. And so I would say in the future, if we were to put a bikeways on this, we would definitely have ample right away to be able to do that because it is a pretty wide street. Don't think I can land a plane on it, but I do feel I have ample room. I actually was out there this morning driving it with the team. So it is a pretty wide and I feel very comfortable that we would be able to structure it so we would have a safe bikeways along with the parking in place. And we'll take a look at that. We'll add it to the conversation. Okay, I appreciate that. And just if, for one more point, of clarification then, if I may share. Um, so at present, there is a bikeway um, quasi, it, it's not protected, right, it, on Charlotte Pike. Um, and it is protected, but there are areas because of the access, the driveways, we cannot make it as protective as we would like. Okay. So we have some access management challenges along Charlotte Pike. Okay. But there is some protected areas along the way to really make the bikeway stand out. Right, but by protected, you just mean vertical plastic delineators. At you don't moment, mean yes, actual physical protection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess my question, and, and again, colleagues kind of contextualizing, you know, we're talking about parking like this segment, this segment, this segment, this segment. So we want to think about the bigger kind of greenway picture. Right. Um, you mentioned to me in my previous inquiry, you know, you're going up across the university connector, joining up with Charlotte, but the area that you were discussing in 40101, is that not then going past this area past the park's headquarters in the dog park, picking up the 440 Greenway. Like, I, I, I apologize, I, I, I am not understanding no, no, no. the so, intended Col pathway. Colby, do you have a larger map you could draw up, please? Maybe of, if we got a larger Greenway? map. Yeah, I appreciate that. With, it's gonna which help shows me. how these streets are connected. I think that would be helpful for the discussion because I think there's a disconnect or lack of clarity, whatever the term is. And I thought I was doing a great job explaining. Picture's worth a thousand words. I agree, sir. <clears throat> Wish I had it on.
Can you pull it up? And so if I could though, yeah. until they get it pulled up, let me just walk y'all through it. If you look at page three in your um, packet, that shows a picture of uh, Park Plaza Street, starting with 31st on the south, on the east side, and then what would be the terminus point or would go into the um, headquarters for the parks. So uh, the building at the very end on the left side, this right here is the board, the parks boardroom. This is actually the dog park. The greenway is designed to go along the right, uh, the perimeter of the dog park. Starting at this point, this roadway right here, which is the road uh, that you get to the uh, parks um, headquarters, will come down and it stops at 31st. They will be transitioning across because the greenway then starts on 31st here. A university so, connector also yes, known as. connect over there and then moves over that way. So that's how the connection will happen. Okay, so the, I, I think, Chair, the disconnect is, I, I think there are certain members of the community, myself included, that um, have a difficult time visualizing the 440 Greenway. And I think it had been understood that it might come along, and again, this could be years ago, Director, um, along uh, Park Plaza, along the park, past parks headquarters, and somehow over, under, a ramp cross 440 yeah and so you're speaking of this as if it's a terminus whereas i think people considered it would continue to go on from the parks it will but at this point this is what they're building so they're not building the entire stretch they're focusing on building this one connection so again building i want to say a block at a time right. um but there this is part of the greenway and it is this is what's yeah. being designed because this is what they can go do pretty quick and easy right. and fast and get this done but if you look to the left where the parks um, headquarter is, which is a little bit further. Keep going right there. Stop. Go back. Uh, right there. Stop. Right there where you see where his um, bingo. That is the headquarters. At the moment, it is meant to connect, and I don't know the exact path, so I do not want to misspeak, but they do have it right now where it will end there, and how that connection happens over to 440, because they are working through the design and the plans, but they're not ready for it, but they do have this portion from that street down to 31st, ready to move forward. Can, can you scan that back out, please, Corbin? Okay. Um, Chair, so what I'm understanding, and I appreciate you're right, a picture is worth a thousand Yeah, words. I'm just trying um, to make sure that everyone is clear by the picture. I think the frame of reference gets lost. Yes, I appreciate that. So um, as funded um, and ready for construction is this area along uh, the dog park um, to the park's HQ. But as master planned, you know, I, I, it continues as you had said. Okay, and is that funded, not funded? What's the time frame? I do not know. I can get that for you, council member, but I do not know um, the answer to that, but I'll be more than happy to reach out to director um, and get the answer. Oh, okay, uh, there's a is there, community member, who, <laughs> Mr. Clegg. Who's the person in the audience, please? Is, are, are you affiliated with Parks? Excuse me, please identify who you are. Jonathan Cleggan, I'm with KCI Technologies. Um, okay. Actually working with Parks on the extension of the Greenway that we're okay. talking about. All right, thank you. Just for clarification, the existing 440 Greenway does pass under 440 right there. There's a section between um, Elmington Park and the Parks headquarters existing today. And so it does cross under. And this particular new section is intended also to connect to Centennial Park. Okay. Um, there's a there's a phase four master plan currently going on with Centennial Park. Okay, and then so uh, th this portion um, as completed or in to, scheduled to be done along the dog park on Park Plaza to the parks HQ upon completion is 
is that connection made, right? I mean, it's up to this point, there is an underpass. There's an underpass. But when this segment is completed that the director is, is speaking about as being the next one coming that, you know, remains to be seen from a time frame perspective, will that then make that connection or is there gonna have to be more capital improvement to effectuate the physical connection of the existing piece with no, this? It will extend the existing portion of the 440 green. Great, okay, excellent. Okay. Right. okay. Um, and so there's, there's another, I am not working on the, there's also another portion of the 440, 440 Greenway that's under design. And that's, that's from Elmington Park to the east. And okay. I don't have the specifics on that, but. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate that clarification. So I guess um, then, you know, director has said she needs to be in touch with parks to understand um, the, uh, the time frame on that first I can, I can get portion yeah um but uh it, the the portion that's under discussion now um chair for um deferral or rather for passage <laughs> 4 yes so I, I guess what i want to understand then as the 440 greenway as conceived right, in its entirety, to your point of larger context, was the intent then to go under 440, go past Parks HQ, go past the Centennial Dog Park, and then turn over the university connector, pick up Charlotte Pike, and then, or was it just to go to Centennial Park? Like I, what? I can't speak to that, I'm not sure. I. I do know that this small connections in Centennial Park, um, the piece that we're currently designing, um, is the only portion that's funded in this particular area. Okay. Um, director, is there, um, since we are talking about the segment between 31st and 25th, where we have a whole lot of right of way, um, is there a point of ingress or egress? So say, you know, I live over um, on uh, Whitland or, you know, I'm a, a kid, a family that goes to school at West End Middle School. Um, but, you know, I'm wanting to either get over to Centennial Park or to over to this side of town. I have followed the 440 Greenway with my kids and I'm coming up here. Um, and then I get to um, 31st Avenue North. What do I do then, Director? So we we will be designing and making sure it's connecting. So that was my conversation that I've been having since Friday back and forth with the uh, Director and Parks with Monique is about the connection because there is already kind of like a Greenway bikeway established along 31st and we want to make sure that that connection is happening until the connection to the park is done or there's an additional expansion as you had mentioned about looking at making 34th a parallel because it's a softer ride so we will be design we will be making connections across 31st so that they can get appropriate to the other side which will also connect them to the park as well i just don't think there's a uh, like a direct connection into the park yet that would that I think is what's being designed. Right, there's a topo issue yeah. there too, right? Correct. It's pretty, it drops off. Correct. I believe that's part of the existing current master plan that's ongoing. Okay, yeah. so, so we will be making the connection to 31st across the street, which will give them connection to the park. Okay, I guess what I just want to understand here then is in, a, in approving this motion, I am not going to hear back from the community that we filled up Park Plaza with uh, on-street parking and thus we've got a bit of a, you know, dysfunction yeah. junction access issue for people who are wanting the easiest, most pleasant, most protected path to Centennial Park. So if you all need to remove on-street parking so that you can effectuate I, that ingress and egress. I promise you I will. Okay. There is. It's, yes, it's just non-metered at the it's moment. There's already on-street parking. It's just non-metered. But I understand exactly what you're saying, and I will show you, Council Member, we will make sure the connection happens. Okay. Thank All you. Right. So getting back to the matter at hand, uh, 4.0102, we have first and a second. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? I'm just going to abstain on that one, please. All right. It's Thank been you. approved. Okay. The last two items we pulled, uh, I think we could 
both of those related to a parkway, which was 4.01.15 and 16, which was yes, north side of Patterson Street between 22nd and 21st and between 20th Avenue North 17th and the south side of Patterson Street between 19th Avenue North and 17th Avenue North. I, can we consider those as, as a bundle, those two together? Yes, sir. Okay. I would appreciate that. All right. Um, just a little bit of background. There is a future plans for a bikeway on this particular stretch of the street, um, but it is not even in design yet. So we're talking about maybe a year and a half to two years down the road before the bikeway is built. Chair, so, just a point of where we have, we're not on the right slide at present. It's 4.015. One five. One five and one six, yes. I work so hard to get pictures and then we don't share them. Got a lot of pictures. You there yet? 15. I'm sorry to interrupt, Director. I just want to make sure. No, no, no. Point thank of clarification. You. No, we thank were... you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Got it? Thank you. Thank you. So uh, given that we are, we will be going into design and we will be putting a bikeway here, which means at some point in the future, parking is going to be removed. We are asking for, again, the flexibility similar to uh, the very first one is that you approve the um, on-street metered parking at this time, but it give us the flexibility to remove it when we're ready to move forward and actually construct the greenway, the um, bikeway. Excuse me. That's the, that's the ask. And then that way I don't have to bring it back before you at a later date to request to have it removed. Thank you. Is there, do we have a, excuse me, is there a motion on this item? Thank you, looking for a motion to move forward. And if there's gonna be the bikeway plans, you'll come back to us. Request is that when the bikeway is ready to be constructed, we can just remove the on-street parking and construct the bikeway. Okay. All right. Question? Yes, ask away. So you're saying this area, um, the design of this is one to two years out? Yes. So is it any way beneficial or how many meters are we talk? talk I guess I'm trying to analyze the loss or the revenue that could be made and or lost revenue in the event that we put them in, then go back and take them out two to three years from now, if that bike lane does go within that time frame. So I, I, I do not have that amount, but um, I wouldn't have put it on if I didn't feel it would have a sufficient value to the parking fund in the short term. Um, but I can certainly get that amount. I, I apologize. I do not have it in front of me at the moment. I What's the current it. status of the street now? It does have on-street parking. It's just not metered. Okay. So we would just be metering it, but we do have plans. We've identified this in our bikeways program for uh, for bikeways. We will be actually funding, moving forward with design, but we're talking a year or two out before we're even gonna be in construction. So there's an opportunity and we have meter parking that does surround this. It was a nice, it was a good fit to go ahead and extend the meter parking to this, generate additional revenue for the parking fund. That would give us additional funding in the future so that we'd be able to do more bikeways. So it's going to feed the opportunity for more bikeways down the road or additional infrastructure improvements. Okay. All right. But I'll, be, I'll get that amount, dollar amount for you. Okay. Mr. Adams, do you have a question? Um, yes, I was going to ask, um, since we are, is there a reason why we couldn't just make it a bike path, like temporary or something of that order, just to at least get the experience of it being a bike path since, you know, you're going to put it in and take it out? I don't have the, the funding available to do that today. Okay. Can I ask a yes. context question? Okay, so we... Contextualize the 440 Greenway, particular to that determination that we were making here on Patterson Street. Um, what is this linking up to? Because I think, um, you know, the initial walk and bike strategic plan had indicated that we needed to fund the core bikeable network and work out from there. Obviously, we had something like a 440 Greenway that was sort of parks oriented and was getting funded separately. Patterson seems to be to be kind of a 
uh, in between space, right? It's not a parks oriented one that's and it's not the core right. bikeable network. And so, you know, what I hear from the community is we want a functioning, enjoyable network. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I want to understand, uh, again, Chair, because it, it, it's pertinent to all these determinations we're making about um, on-street parking, I appreciate that with the kiosk, we're more flexible, right? right. We're not putting hard meters Correct. into the ground and, and, and painting ourselves into a corner, a corner, so to speak. So I understand that flexibility. Um, but, you know, these are opportunities to help the community understand the the, the, the intent of our kind of usable right away and network. So can you contextualize Patterson Street in core bikeable network, 440, how this kind of works? So th this is um, not part of the Greenway plan. This is part of our bikeway plan. Um, and it is going to tie into 21st, which we currently already have bike, um, bike lanes on. And in some areas, a cycle track um, built in. So this is, again, going to allow for that connection, kind of starting to fill in those gaps. Uh, the only thing this is planned out for FYI 24 to start design to move into construction. So we're just not, we don't have it funded yet. But we already have a lot of meters around in this area and this will help us organize the neighborhood better especially now that we're going into the you know the 6 a.m. to 12 and then also the enforcement it would have the tendency that this side of the street will get overloaded because people always like to go where the opportunity is free first and we just want to keep it well organized and let everybody know that they have to do all of that but this does have plans to help connect some of the gaps that we have in the current bikeway plan just as you mentioned, so that it's a more consistent flow for the bicycling community. So that's that's where the connection will happen. So we are, this is short term, and you know, it's basically for the next year and a half, maybe two years, um, that we would be um, having the on-street paid meter parking, and then we would remove it and actually put in the bikeway um, there. And I'm not, we haven't gone into design yet, so I cannot speak, um, council member, as to whether it's gonna be bike lanes on both sides, our protected bike lanes, our cycle track that connects. I. I can't speak to all of that right now, but when we move into design, I'll be more than happy to bring that back before the board. But I will tell you our Vision Zero um, advisory board will be heavily involved in that design. Um, and that's one of the things that we'll be actually taking to them. That's why they're setting up their bike bed um, com um, um, committee that will also be looking at design so we can make sure we're making the right connections and they're safe and they're meeting the feel and need of the community as well. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, and Chair, if, if I could just uh, request at a future meeting, um, I think it would be helpful to the commission um, by way of all these kind of uh, things that are coming to us to have an update on the bikeways master plan. We um, would love to. Because I, I feel like whether from the first walk and bike strategic plan and then the updated plan that happened in the context of the pandemic and then further, as we've talked about here, mm. fellow commissioners, the kind of the Greenways master plan and how there's sometimes a disconnect between that and the bikeways plan, but it should really all be the same. Um, I, I think it would be helpful to the commission um, to understand all those, uh, those kind of places where they are. And then I think um, uh, from a funding perspective, right? Because we're talking about making these determinations, um, yeah. you know, to, uh, to we'll chair we'll Mason's that on the standpoint. Thank you. We'll, we'll be more than happy. We would love to bring that back before y'all. All right. We'd probably be Thank looking you. to get some updates on traffic calming and many other programs that are. We have a lot of things that we are doing. That's I've noticed more speed bumps around town. <laughs> it's a good thing. We need it's people to go thing. slow because we want people to move safely okay. on the roads and we don't want so anybody So getting back to the matter at hand, uh, item 4.01.15, 4.01.16, is there a motion to move forward to approve? So moved. Okay. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Those have moved forward. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's, it's good to be rolling this out. Okay. Next item is item 5.01, which is the revocation of Old Town Trolley Stop on 2nd Avenue South at Broadway, requested by, it was requested by Clearbook Hospitality tenants. Uh, so 
before we get the staff report, is there anyone here in the audience here to speak about this matter? Okay, raise your hand up high so I can see. We have one person. Okay. Staff, if you could provide your report and then we'll ask this person to step forward. Absolutely. All right, uh, this commission approved this location back in 2016 for Old Town Trolley. It's actually, I think, part of part of a request from tenants just to have that stop there. Um, we did a, just, a, just a recent look at crashes, um, and also we consulted with the uh, Transportation Licensing Commission if there were any rules, laws, requirements uh, that would you know, cause us to need to remove this, this stop, and we did not find any. As far as crashes, there are actually like 57 crashes in this area, and there's actually seven crashes within the time of the operation. Uh, none of the crash records that we pulled of the seven actually mention, you know, an accident with the trolley or uh, the trolley causing a crash. So just from the staff analysis, we didn't see an issue with the trolley stop being at this location, but we wanted to have this on the agenda. So if anybody would, did want to speak uh, to this, have concerns, they could have the opportunity. I guess, point of order, Chair, who, who is the applicant requesting the removal of the stop? It, my understanding, it was Clear Brook Hospitality. Is that correct? Ten, yeah, the tenants. I think there was two or three tenants uh, okay. that had concerns, and we just... So adjacent so, tenants are requesting. Yeah, adjacent tenants, yeah. left and right side. All right, there's a person who wants to speak about this matter who's here. Would you like to step forward, state your name for the record, please? Make sure your mic is on so we can hear you. My name is Steve Burris, the general manager of Old Town Trolley. And I came today basically just to answer any questions that you may have about this. So staff, is your recommendation to leave the trolley stop in place? Um, yeah, we just requested to deny the revocation, just leave it in place. All right. Does anyone have any What's your name again, please, sir? Steve Burris. Okay. Anyone has any questions for Mr. Burris? Are you the trolleys that drive around and go by Belmont University, et cetera? Yes. Okay. They come by my house 10 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Very familiar with them. We wave at them when they come by. So, okay. Questions? Um, okay, so uh, to the, the chair's question, then this is uh, something for um, citizens, tourists, or otherwise, just to tour around um, Nashville, right? It, it's 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 a paid tour for just recreation purposes. Yes, it's a okay. it's a hop on hop off tour for. Okay, so you can get like a, a ticket for the trolley for the day, get off, see some things, get back on. And this is on a kind of consistent rotation then? Yes, ma'am. On a prescribed route. Um, I, I guess my question would be, um, how many stops in total do you have? What is the closest stop to this stop? And why do you feel that this particular stop is um, especially important? Because I have seen similar vehicles in the riverfront pull in, um, which is very near to here. And so I'm just, I'm just wondering um, if you could, again, contextualize it. Yeah. Certainly, certainly. Uh, the closest stop for us, to, we have 13 stops around the city. Uh, the closest stop to this location would be at the Country Music Hall of Fame on DeMombrin Street. That location was, uh, we, we own the parking lot at 2nd and Broadway directly across the street from this location. Um, so back in 2016, we asked the commission at that time, it was a taxi stand, I believe. Um, and we asked the commission at that time if it could be converted to a trolley stop, not, not an old town trolley stop. So it was used by Gray Line for a period of time uh, up until 2020 when they ceased operations of their hop on hop off. So our main reason for really wanting that location is that it is directly across from where we do ticket sales um, at 201 Broadway. Chair, may I ask yes, a follow-up question? Yeah. Okay, so in the picture that we have before us, you all are the owners of that 
parking lot or your ticket sales happen within the public right way at a kiosk? Can you share how that kind of works? Like, sir, yeah, particular to your trolley, like not necessarily pulling into the parking lot, which you own versus if you just kind of explain how all that works together. Okay. Please. Certainly, sure. certainly. We do own the parking lot that is on the left side of Second Avenue. Um, and our ticket sales booth is within our property. Uh, so we sell uh, on our on our property. We recently, um, actually uh, through Public Works, got permission to have an entryway off of Second Avenue onto our parking lot. Our intention was that we could pull our vehicles into the parking lot, then make the right onto Broadway in order to stay off of the, the public public right of way uh, on Second Avenue. The traffic congestion on Broadway and us entering the traffic um, would have to be all things perfect for us to make that turn out of that parking lot with our vehicles to head down to first uh, and make the left. So another option that we tested, which did not work so well, uh, was pulling into our parking lot on 2nd Avenue and then rejoining traffic on 2nd Avenue uh, from our parking lot. That would require that we stop traffic on 2nd Avenue, and I know that we don't want to cause more congestion in the 2nd Avenue and Broadway area. Um, so both of those, despite that being our intention of using our parking lot there, uh, would cause more problems than this uh, area that, that has been designated for us across the street. Okay, and just to clarify then, Gray Line had used it at one time. It had previously been a taxi stand. So from staff, uh, Mr. Oldham, is, is this a permit specific to Old Town Trolley or could other um, vendors uh, use it if they so chose? And to whom would they, is that us, TLC? Like how, how does that work? And, and then I guess as it relates to Connect Downtown, are we for, you know, vehicles for hire, ticket sales, et cetera, are, are we looking at some consolidated approach to that, whether at the foot of Broadway or otherwise? Is that under discussion? I mean, I think in the meantime, if, if this is working as it's working and, you know, uh, applicants sort of external to you all have asked for this versus, um, you know, I, I'm not inclined to... Um, uh, support a revocation, but I just, again, want to understand that in the context of Connect Downtown and sort of consolidating some of these sort of vehicles for hire or by ticket um, in a particular location. I had understood maybe that was under discussion. Uh, I'm not sure how this is signed, if it's, if it's specific to Old Town Trolley or the other. We may have changed that recently after the other, but Andy can speak to that. I think we have additional staff members who can speak to this matter. I'm Andrew Smith, an engineer with NDOT. Uh, it is signed as a trolley stop from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and a taxi stand after 6 p.m. Uh, it's not specific to Old Town Trolley, but it is in the traffic schedule as a trolley stop during the day and a taxi stand at night. Um, I'm Brad Fries, uh, Chief Engineer of the Nashville DOT. So I would add, as part of Connect Downtown, we are looking at consolidation of loading and loading and such zones like this. So yes, that is part of our study. And we're actually gonna provide an update overall on our study later on in the agenda. I would, Chair, if I may, yes. um, move to... Um, uh, I think it's deny the revocation. To deny the revocation. Sorry, sorry to put words. No, in not not at all. Because the <laughs> staff recommendation was counter to the request. So yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. Yes, in the back. I'm sorry. You don't remember? I don't remember seeing you raise your hand earlier. No, no, no that's so fine. I just didn't. I was trying to recognize everyone who wanted to speak earlier. No problem. Please state your name for the record, please. My name is LaDonna Bacon. I am the property manager of... Can you please turn your mic on, please? Okay. 
My name is LaDonna Bacon. I am the property manager and managing agent for CR Broadway LLC, who owns the building. And I have been working with the tenants um, on their concerns about the trolley stop. One of the concerns, um, not only from Whiskey River Saloon, but from Clearbrook Hospitality, which is the Glen Campbell Museum on the second floor, is the obstruction of the view of the building by not always just one trolley, but sometimes two trolleys that are parked there waiting for um, passengers to either embark or disembark. It is a huge obstruction to, to that side of the building if you're coming down Broadway and heading towards the building. I mean, the Glen Campbell Museum is completely obstructed, or the entrance, which is on the first floor. In addition to that, I've noticed particularly during the summertime when those buses are sitting there idling and just chugging out really hot exhaust. It is excruciatingly hot in front of that building. And then you've got lines of people that are just standing there waiting to get on the bus. And I, I completely sympathize with the concerns of the tenants in those buildings. And I didn't realize that the parking lot across the street was owned by Old Town trolley, but it, it seems like there has got to be some way to get those buses away from the building entrance for the tenants and the guests to that, to that building and move that trolley somewhere else. Trolleys. Thank you for your comments. Any questions for Ms. Bacon? Is that correct? Correct. Sorry, I didn't see your hand earlier. I just... Yes, council member. I, I guess my question maybe is more to staff. Um, through the Transportation Licensing Commission, do we have any rules about idling um, for these uh, vehicles like Old Town Trolley and, and otherwise? Or is there any rule, like when somebody gets their license from the Transportation Licensing Commission for embarkation, disembarking? I mean, because I, I appreciate the concern that, that your tenants is, are expressing. Is there an idling rule? I, I can try to answer it. There is not a specific rule of the TLC um, that is directed at that, but it does incorporate, um, you know, rules of the road generally um, by reference into most of the code provisions, um, including 677. So if it was to be a violation as part of the rules of the road, then it would be a violation of chapter 677 as well, which governs the entertainment transportation vehicles. But um, I, th I think the concept of a, a stop, like a bus stop or a trolley stop is that idling is anticipated. And I guess for another point of clarification from staff, um, is the stop happening it's not happening within the travel lane, right? There is otherwise on street parking, but in this segment, there is not metered parking because there is a stop uh, identified or established. I think you can see it's off. And uh, looking at this slide, Ms. Bacon, where is the entrance to the museum? Is it the owning? Yes, that's correct. And in between the two sandwich board signs. Okay. For clarification, thank you. Um, Chair, yes. could I guess, could I ask Mr. Smith, I mean, relative to on-street parking and the concern about the obstruction to the entrance museum and idling, is there space um, further to the south um, that could be held or I, I, I guess I'm just wanting. In this photograph, the trolley bus is in the rearmost position of the trolley stop. Uh, you can see the back of some signage in front of the utility pole. That's where the uh, trolley stop ends. It ends about 30 feet away from the stop bar. I'll let Mr. Burris speak to their operations about how they use that. During my investigation, I observed the trolley stop with about a three to four minute dwell time to uh, let passengers embark and disembark. And that was uh, the, the times that I watched that, that included a disabled passenger in a walker was, was, all, was disembarking from the bus within four minutes. 
So they're not, I, I haven't seen anything idling there for 10, 15 minutes at a time. They're, they stop and people get on, people get off, and then that goes, that bus leaves when the, when the light allows it to do so. Uh, just to follow up on that, how long has that study been going on? Was it during peak heavy, you know, tourism time or just a, a small specific amount of time that you noticed that? Uh, that was done by me uh, during this past month as preparation for this staff analysis report. In, yes, Commissioner. So it was, it was sorry. It was mentioned in here that there were some concessions made and altered operations by OTT with um, with compassion for some of these issues. Could you speak to some of those? Yes, sir. Um, in September of last year, um, we changed our operation. This used to be our main stop uh, on our tour, so we would have drivers that would get off the vehicle, get onto another one. That's when you would see uh, two trolleys there at a time. There were two, there are two marked trolley spaces uh, off of the, the right of way. Um, so in September of last year, because we had heard some of these complaints and issues, and actually I spoke with uh, uh, the Mr. Olson with Clearbrook Hospitality who brought that to my attention. Um, and we worked with him to, his, his concern was visibility of his museum. Uh, so we began stopping back further as, it, as in that picture back in September um, of, of last year and shifted our, our operation so that we are doing our driver switch at a different location. So the three to four minutes that was um, documented here is about what we're spending now, and that would be in a case where we're we're being more careful with someone who who, who needs extra time. Um, so we are in and out of there very quickly, and that is as of September last year. Mr. Olson uh, and I spoke, and and he expressed his concern um, to me about the visibility. So we began stopping further back. And uh, I believe it's actually in the staff report uh, that Mr. Olson had said that we had come to an amicable agreement. Chair, I guess for Mr. Smith then, um, or, and I apologize, I don't remember reading in the staff report, but um, I know staff's recommendation is, is not to revoke per the request, but have we effectuated a signage change to kind of formalize this kind of good faith agreement to stop back further? I mean, should we not? Because, you know, drivers change and things get busy. I mean, should we not re-sign this um, kind of in a good faith space of if, if, if this commission chooses not to revoke it, they would then maybe formalize um, by way of the signage, the concerns that the adjacent um, business owners have expressed. I don't know if you'd be amenable to that or. One, one of the things that I, I was thinking of coming to this meeting are there are two spots um, and we are no longer using the front spot. Um, mm -hmm. So we are using that second area um, and that would take care of at least the concerns that I have, have heard about. Um, I believe our our speed of, of going through there and not idling in that location more than three to four minutes takes care of a lot of the, the issues that were brought up here uh, about the the heat, although in the in the summer it's going to be hot, but uh, that would take care of, of exhaust and, and long idle periods. And if we removed that front trolley stop area, that should also help visibility. And by front, you mean to the south? back to, where this is depicted to the north uh, to the so north. there's a stop north of where that trolley is sitting okay um that we no longer use in order to give them visibility if, if you're contemplating a change in the in the traffic schedule regulation at this site the only thing that i would recommend is perhaps shortening the existing trolley stop length and designating no parking to corner so that you really you really don't want to load more cars in front of the trolley because then I don't think it's going to get out. Oh, however, concur, yeah. however, it's still a taxi stand. And if you restrict that to if you shorten the length of the trolley stop and taxi stand, now there's fewer taxis that can stand there too. 
uh, would have to get very creative with signage uh, in order to keep the taxis there, but we really don't want other people parking at that location. Okay, Chair, I guess I was thinking about amending my motion. Okay. Um, but I, I, I guess I'm looking to Mr. Smith from the staff. I mean, because when we kind of, you know, amending on, on the fly here based on y'all's input, I appreciate. Um, I guess I'm trying to find kind of the middle path um, because recognizing that with Connect Downtown, we may be coming up with a more holistic solution. And so that's that's why I'm disinclined to support the revocation at this time. While I, I do appreciate the concerns of the people that you represent, um, it feels like there's a, a good faith effort here to, to do better. Um, and to the extent that we could formalize that by way of a motion, um, and then you know when we get to maybe a, a more holistic solution, then we can revisit this chair. Um, I Mr. Smith, do you have a suggested uh, motion that if it's a dual taxi stand, I mean, if if we, I mean, it's codified like is a trolley stop a, a thing? Is that a separate codified thing from a taxi stand? And if so, can we not just make the motion okay. to reduce the size of the trolley stop and leave taxi stand as is? We can we can shorten that down to, you know, to to a, uh, what do you need, 30 feet to operate one? 30 feet. So, yeah, absolutely, we can do that. Okay, so I would like to amend my motion okay. um, to uh, uh, decline um, the, the revocation of the trolley stop, but to reduce it in size to a 30-foot um, <laughs> um, okay. dis distance right. length. Thank you. Okay. Right. Yep. Is there a second to that motion? Uh, okay. Um, Chair, can I yes. take some feedback from staff there? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Further okay. amending my motion okay. that it is a 40 foot uh, length, okay. please. Okay. But we're going to shorten the length to 40 feet. That is the motion, correct? Deny the revocation, but uh, 40 foot. Correct, Chair. And we do not need to formalize no parking to corner because that's just a safety issue okay. that y'all will address. Okay, thank you. So that's the motion. Is there a second? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Are we voting to let him have a trolley stop there yes. if, we, if, we, if we shorten it? Yes, it would deny the revocation I'm, with I'm a 40 for it. I'm, Okay. I'm all for the you want to make man. You want to second the motion and then we'll yeah, have... Yeah, I'll second. Okay, but Commissioner... He's got a question. He's got a question. I just have a one one concerning question. There was mention of a line forming in the right of way when when people board and or get tickets or whatnot. So I I would just like to address the concern there with safety and people lining up. If we're I agree with shortening, but how are we addressing uh, the pedestrian safety with this? One of the things that um, when we were pulling further forward, it was blocking the entrance to the, the Glen Campbell Museum. We did our best to try to split that line up so that there was entrance uh, to, to that area. Moving the trolley back, we have moved our line back so that when there are people, it's a very busy area, um, when there are people that are waiting for the trolley to come in, um, we've moved that line back so that it doesn't block entrance to to the building so just for clarification if, if somebody comes to buy a ticket at, at that corner i'm assuming that green building is where you buy tickets do they immediately then go stand and wait for a bus to come and or board or is there a way to hoard them over there by your stand you know how, how does that work we send them across the street and we we typically have a uh an employee who is there to to try to keep them off of as, as far over against the building on the sidewalk as possible. Um, so they do go across the street. Some people tend to wait over over in around our ticket booth, but with the crossing the street, we feel that it's safer for them to cross over the street as soon as the uh, as they are able after purchasing the ticket uh, instead of as <laughs> scrambling across the street, perhaps against signs um, when a trolley pulls forward. And, and on average, how many people are we talking? 
Mornings are much busier. Uh, we will have, I, I believe I was, I was talking with our operations team this morning. We had a couple of times where there were 50 to 80 people who were waiting. Um, and that, and during season that can, that can be the case. So we pull a trolley in and we're able to carry 52 people. So then we get that line down to 30. We send another trolley in to get those 30 people and then clear them up. I guess my, my opinion with considering that, you know, that, that seems like a, a good number of people um, gathering there at a period of time as, as trolleys come and, 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 and leave. Um, is there any way we could create some sort of plan to manage that and potentially defer this so that, you know, that, that's a lot of people standing there, in my opinion. Um, at any given time in the, in the morning. Now there's probably less traffic with, with tours or whatnot, but you know, just cause considering that and the business front um, during those times. And, and I'm asking, I don't know yeah, the right answer there. I figure out who has the answer to the question about, I guess there's pedestrian safety and then also making sure that the museum operates clearly. And we, we do have a the sandwich board sign that you saw in, in I believe, the next picture. Um, it, it is a queuing sign which says passengers board here uh, so that people will line up beyond that sign, which gives the uh, entrance to the, the museum and keeps them from blocking that area. In this photo, you can see the sign that he's talking about. Uh, it's further from the... Yes, it's right there. It's behind the Glen Campbell sign. Uh, and there's a, a sign there. This is Old Town Trolley and, and passengers, you know, queue here. With, and there's an arrow there, too. I guess I, I would then ask staff, you know, what, what is y'all's, have y'all um, witnessed this? What's y'all's level of comfort with this operation and the way that it's flowing? That's been operating since 2016, and we have... Uh, 57 crashes total at, at 2nd and Broadway. I filtered out all of the crashes that were on 2nd Avenue North. I filtered the crashes that took place outside of the posted hours of the trolley stop, and that left me with five crashes over a five-year period. And it's just, it's been our experience that, that pedestrian safety is pretty good at this location. You know, there's, there's problems, there's issues downtown, but this is this has not proved to be one of them. Okay, so you have a question? All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. Is there any, we have a first and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And this, Ms. Bacon and Ms. Mr. Burris, if y'all work together with the staff, that'd be great. Yes, sir. so I will. I will say something, Chair. Yes, this is Brad Freeze from from Indot. So we are looking to address this with Connect Downtown too. So I want. I do want to say that as far as capacity in these locations and actually queuing on the sidewalk with regard to the loading. I appreciate that, Chair, because I think that's, if I may, I, th I think that's one of those places where, like, the, the TLC kind of intersects with right, us because does. the rules around it queuing does. or idling right. and what, we, how we, that we, we grant the stand. They have to regulate how it's used. Right, but I so. think that, that'll be good for that right. to be right. part of. Work, work together. Sir, can you cut your trolleys off to accommodate those, that lady? Well, when, when we were staging in that area, we could, but now that it's a pull-in load and then we go, um, we wouldn't be able to do that. It, it would cause engine issues if, if we did that, that frequently. All right. All right. Thank All you. Right. The, the next item on the agenda is 6.01, which is update to the standing rules of the Metropolitan Traffic and Parking Commission. This is a deferred item from last month. Did everybody get a chance to review those over the past month? Is there a any kind of mm -hmm. motion that any person on the commission would like to make concerning the standing rules? Council member? 
I think, Chair, I'm, I'm comfortable uh, moving approval at this juncture, but I, I did have um, some suggestions that I thought maybe I would just kind of speak into the record to be perhaps addressed at another time because I just, I, I did not submit my suggestions timely, but I thought in articulating okay. them here that might afford us an opportunity okay. at, a, at a later date. So I don't want to hold uh, hold the update, um, but I did uh, okay. think that there were a few things that I would like to okay. share for the commission's consideration. Could, yes, be, please proceed. Um, okay, uh, I, I did want um, to suggest on um, in our standing rules as proposed um, item seven, um, uh, that that could potentially create some confusion um, for um, uh, community members um, reading an agenda and, and wanting to speak on an item that is on that agenda. You know, must they request to speak before the meeting? I, I think as worded, Mr. Oldham, um, it, it's request to appear before the commission for a public hearing. Um, I've heard some feedback from community members, whether it be on sidewalk vending or otherwise, I think what we're intending is a request to be on the agenda, right? Like you're you're submitting an application to request for something. And I, I just feel like there we could do a clarification of, of wording there. Um, uh, because, you know, all items are on public hearing. And so, um, you know, one cannot ask for action on a specific agenda item before something has been placed on an agenda. So I just wanted to uh, encourage a, a, some clarification there. Um, and then on item uh, 13, Chair, um, no commission member shall call any meeting of commission employees without first obtaining approval of the chair. Rightly so, Chair, in, in deference to your leadership, but I would say there is something particular to the council member, member of the commission, because I am in touch with staff all the time. <laughs> um, and and I, just, I, I just didn't know if we needed yeah. to clarify who is staff of the commission versus NDOT employees. Um, I have to be in touch with NDOT staff. Well, in I, I understand, and, I, and yeah. um, uh, I would... I would, I, I'm not this controlling. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely, sir. I, I understand. I understand. No, I just, for the reference of others, but uh, yeah. I, I, I think the, uh, the spirit of this, and I appreciate your kind, is more to uh, try to encourage commissioners to... Uh, of course, yeah, right. Not, not, you don't want to convene a separate meeting yeah, with staff right, or staff. Right, or nobody right. would suggest So I, th I think the that. intention is clear. Maybe the wording can be worked on, but... Okay. Uh, um, I appreciate that. Um, and then item... I wish I was that powerful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Item nine, um, I, I did want to suggest that we consider, um, you know, again, in time, maybe with a proposal from staff, but if we look at how we do kind of public hearing comparative to say like a BZA, um, where there's a certain amount of minutes and a proponent speaks first and then a, uh, uh, you know, opponent speaks secondly and how much time you have there, um, I, I would just suggest that we might want to consider following a similar um, pattern rather than kind of formalizing again, uh, Chair, to your point, um, uh, you know, that you just, I don't think we want to give the appearance that any chair would sort of kind of exercise the ability to say, okay, well, you can talk now and you can't talk now. I think if we maybe just sort of formalize the expectations, then it's, it, it's, perceived as, as fair. Um, and this so is just historically speaking of my years on the commission, we've had a fairly informal, a certain informal approach. And if someone showed up almost and wanted to discuss, we would, I think we were a little more fluid than maybe some other. I appreciate that. And that, and that yeah. might be how we want to remain colleagues. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, just, not, I'm just trying to provide some contact. No, I appreciate that. Um, and then let's see, I guess, um, the only other thing, and I, I can't recall, uh, Mr. Oldham, if that was in fact um, uh, part of the standing rules as proposed or because if this is an item apart, please just let me know and I, I will put it aside. Um, but I noticed in um, uh, that uh, Chief Drake, right, serves as a, a ex officio um, uh, here. And is, is that in our standing rules or is that just um, obviated through our um, listing. 
because I think sometimes community members are not clear what ex officio means, and we're, we're so glad to have you here representing uh, uh, Chief Drake, but as to kind of voting or not voting, um, I, I feel like whomever's been in this role has been voting, but I think ex officio would mean that you don't vote, and so I didn't know where that fit in um, our rules versus, um, yes, ma'am, thank you. Legal counsel. So um, uh, the, the language establishing that relationship, that that role in among the commission members and actually all of the commission members is actually in the charter of the metropolitan government. And um, I think it's uh, 11.901. And um, uh, the, um, uh, the ex officio wording just means by virtue of their office. It does not necessarily mean non-voting unless that is also specified. Okay, so when I have served in that capacity on other boards, that is just a rule particular to that board. It would versus, be a case. It's not my intent. I, I, I want you to vote. <laughs> it's fine. It, it but often I just, is. It often okay. is um, uh, things that go along with each other. But um, I, I think it would be a case by case um, determination, depending on what that particular body or the entity that creates it wants to do. Okay. I appreciate that clarification, Chair. That just came to mind as I was reviewing that. So, um, again, I'm, I'm comfortable with the rules as they are, but I just wanted to kind of right. speak those on for the record and you know, you. say that we might consider those in the future. So, is it you have you made a motion to approve? Oh, and Chair, if I could. I apologize, Chair. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to ask um, for our consideration um, in the future, I'm sorry, um, uh, uh, item 16 um, on our standing rules. Um, I would ask that we also might consider um, a uh, for our chairmanship um, that we do that annually, but we might consider a minimum of say three consecutive one year terms or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, uh, some language, um, you know, commissioners accepting the council member, right? Like, I, I don't yeah. think the council member should ever be chair of this commission. We haven't really formalized no. that. I think perhaps we should formalize that. Um, and that, um, uh, you know, just, uh, I would suggest that the board be kind of notified of the responsibilities of the chair and the vice chair at the October meeting um, when nominations are invited, um, self nominations are encouraged, you know, uh, it, a little more maybe language around um, how the elections were kind of happen and who's eligible and that um, potentially, uh, uh, you know, commissioners having served at least one full year of a term on the commission are eligible to serve as the chair, a, a little more um, clarification okay. in that space is something I would suggest to staff. Okay. So would you like to make a motion to approve? Yes, sir. All right. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Not all in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Okay. The standing rules have been approved. Thank you for your suggestions. Okay. Item 6.0. Two is the NDOT multi-way stop control policy. Mr. Oldham. Yes, we had this for you at the last meeting. meeting. Uh, we were running a little bit late on the last meeting, so I think it just got deferred. Um, and yes. I haven't received any comments on it, but it's just basically yeah. taking the METCD language for multi-way, copying and pasting uh, in a little bit more Okay. Understandable format. Right. Did everybody get a chance to review these since the last month? Is there a motion to approve? We'll move. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any yes, council member? Um, Chair, I wonder if staff, um, because I know there is uh, some, you know, uh, a lot of community questions about this. Um, and while we are formalizing MUTCD, I, I did appreciate that um, uh, there were some additions here um, to afford staff um, some discretion that I think folks that um, have kind of care and concern about our multimodal um, spaces uh, will appreciate. And I, I just wanted to afford staff the opportunity to um, articulate that into the record um, because I think uh, sometimes there's concerns in the community particular about MUTCD um, relative to the most recent update and so forth. So, um, uh, Mr. Oldham, could you just uh, share? Um, yeah. yeah, I can. Thank you. Um, 
Those items actually are in the manual and uniform traffic control devices. Uh, most agencies ignore them. Uh, what we wanted to do was to include and not ignore in our decision making. I appreciate that. And so does this reflect I think what I'm confused about is I know there was a whole kind of federal open public comment, as I understand, about MUTCD, um, and there was a lot of um, activity in kind of the, the, the multimodal community as to crosswalk warrants and other things like that that were pushed forward. And so I guess I had had some concern, Chair, that this was the 2009 manual MUTCD. So can you speak to, with the public comment that happened kind of out in, in the world <laughs> most recently, I guess in the context of the pandemic, why we're formalizing 2009 and where that is in the update cycle, please. Uh, well, the feds don't always deliver on time. Uh, so instead of waiting on them, we just wanted to move ahead. Um, it's, I think it's slated, the MUTCD, to be approved uh, and finalized this year. Uh, but for our day-to-day -day work, uh, we wanted to just have something in front of our engineers saying this is what you need to be looking at uh, versus waiting and kind of uh, not having something formal. Okay, so the federal, the FHWA has not provided a specific date for the MUTCD update at present. Okay, um, if, if I might make a friendly um, amendment to the motion, I, I support moving forward at this time, um, but I would ask that um, once the FHWA has formalized the new MUTCD, um, that within the next meeting of, of that being formalized, that they come back to this commission so that we can formalize, because I think so many of the multimodal things that we care about will be addressed then. Thank you. be updated to reflect that. Yep, correct, for example. And, and I think that update actually would, would actually occur at the state level and at the code level and then us. So I'd probably stick with this until we get all those other check boxes. I, I wouldn't wait on the state, but at city metro code right. has and, language in there for the dates. Right, right. and Chair, it, it would not be my intent to say, you know, if this, then that, then we totally formulize whatever's coming. I would just ask that it, it come back to this commission, right? right? We be made, I, we be made what? aware. All right, we'll um, make a motion to that effect and then okay. we'll, yeah. um, I would move we get a second. approval as proposed by staff um, with the request requirement. Otherwise, that when this does become formalized through FHWA and um, adopted by TDOT such that it would come into effect for us that it be brought back to this commission for our awareness and discussion at okay. that time. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. It has been passed. Thank you. All right. The next item is, is 6.03, update on Connect Downtown study, and a request to extend the curb moratorium to May of 2023, and a series of sub items connect downtown presentation, the curb inventory map, and the downtown traffic modeling update. I think Chief Engineer Freeze, are you making this presentation or who is doing this, please? Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioners, thanks for the opportunity for this update on the Connect Downtown study. We have a few slides. Please state your name for the record. Since yes, sir. Marty please. Sewell with NDOT. And um, we have a few slides prepared for you. I can't tell if, is this working? Everyone can hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, and clicker, who's doing the clicking? All right, thank you. Um, just starting with our slides here, taking us back to when we came up with it, the idea to do the downtown plan. You know, how do we manage the congestion and then how do we do so in a way that continues our growth in downtown? So just to set us up, that's what we were thinking when we set this project up. On to the next slide. With our partners at WeGo, TDOT, and the Downtown National Partnership, we were able to put together a scope of work. And of course, you, we've, met, we've been able to present to this board a couple of times. It was back in April and November of last year to give you updates on where we were at that time. So currently, let's work with these folks, put together our RFP, and I'm working now with consultant Nelson Nygaard and their partners to, um, to conduct the plan. So next, next slide, please. 
Our schedule, um, this is where it stands today. You can see that up until this point, the various um, aspects of the plan that we've been completing and working through, we've made our way to the priority solutions now, and we have started a new, um, a new phase of community engagement that's associated with that that I'll talk about just a bit here. Um, go ahead to the next slide, please. Um, we're at, again, we're at the stage of priority, prioritizing solutions. And so this um, selection of various solutions here, all of these have to be mixed in just the right way. And that's what we'll be working toward is how to make sure that we have these all mixed together in a way that will meet the goals of the plan. So I'm gonna focus on three big moves out of this group that really do impact all of the other items that are on that board. So if you could go to the next slide. Before I do that though, remembering that we have a lot of strategies to manage congestion that are in progress, that are also related to traffic operations. All of these things complement the big three that I'm about to speak about. So if you could go on to the next slide. We have three high impact, high impact solutions. We're speaking about the priority loading areas, which of course is closest to this board, the transit priority quarters, as well as mobility lanes. And I'll talk about each of these um, in, in detail, well, in small detail. Um, to the next slide, please. The priority loading areas, um, this is addressing the concern that there aren't enough of them or that they're not in the right places and addressing safety and congestion that results from people looking for those when they're not there, looking to provide dedicated space, reducing our conflicts, and just have an example here mentioned that part of our best practices um, report that's associated with the plan identified some major um, just really good results from the DC area, the District of Columbia, whenever they applied their commercial parking program. And you can see that result there on the slide. Um, when we talk about priority loading areas, these are not the only place in downtown where you'll be able to have deliveries. Those will be scattered out in a way that is similar to now, but these will be, these priority areas will fill a particular need in the downtown and have the opportunity for flexibility during the day for different uses that are appropriate at different times of day. And the focus is on making the, the curb work for business and for everyone in particular. So the next slide. We have worked with our stakeholders, in particular the delivery stakeholders, um, at one of our workshops last year to identify the lines that you see on the map. And you'll hear me mention this a few times as we go through these big three, but we are in the process now of taking this to the community and getting feedback. And then after that, preparing and packaging so that we can have move toward the final plan. But again, this is where we are right now and what we're showing to the community. This is basically, if you can't see um, those in the audience, that's Broadway, um, excuse me, we've got Broadway, we've got um, second and fourth identified there in Demumbrian and you can get into the details if you need to. We have this, we'll have this on our website as this um, phase of community engagement gets rolling. Next slide, please. Um, the next big move would be transit priority quarters, um, responding to the fact that transit gets bogged down in downtown and they need to have a, a clear path and they need to have an upgraded passenger experience, more frequent service, et cetera, as you see on the screen there. But it's more than just a bus lane. Um, it does involve other, other activities as well in support to the next slide. Right now we're looking at these three options. This is not to say that one, two, or three would be chosen, but we're asking the community to react to these and let us know the pros and cons. Does it meet their needs or not? And that kind of conversation is going to be ongoing over the next, through the end of April, um, as we continue this process. The third big move would be mobility lanes. And we've talked about these as bike lanes in the past, but the concept of mobility lanes would expand that to be more inclusive of not just a bike lane, but also a space that scooters and other, whatever comes along down the line next would use that would be in that same family, but also provide spaces as shown in the photo above where you might have corrals and other things that would be supportive of the mobility lanes. And again, this is of course addressing the issue that there is no that people feel unsafe doing certain things in downtown, particularly with biking and, and even pedestrians in some cases. Go on to the next slide, please. These three options, similar to how we were um, presenting on the transit priority corridors, they're also showing you three different ways that we could prioritize these lanes. This doesn't mean that you wouldn't potentially have a bike lane off-site or off of one of these mobility lanes, um, but these in particular would be wider, they would be um, better signed, and you would just have a better experience and looking for more of a network um, as you create these. Um, on to the next slide. 
as we're moving through um, the community, this is what we've done so far. This doesn't include the, the latest round, but you can see there are all the different kinds of um, places where we've been able to get input. We've had two separate surveys, and this does account for both of those in terms of the 3,700 responses. If you could go into the next slide, please. The ongoing engagement is with these questions above here um, and relating to the three big moves in particular. You know, do these meet your expectations and needs? Are they, how are they going to impact you, these particular strategies? And are there specific ones you like or don't like? And then what is the right combination of these various big moves as, as well as the other um, recommended or other types of solutions that are shown? We'll be working through this community engagement in March and April. In May, drafting and creating the actual document, the plan, and then recommendations, phasing, all of that. We'll publicize that in June and July, and we anticipate the very the final, final completion in August. And um, appreciate the opportunity, and we'll, Brad and I, I think, can address any other questions if we have questions. Okay. Thank you. Yes, council member. I wanted to ask, um, I, I see a lot of um, uh, route mapping, right? Um, particular to multimodal transit and otherwise. I wonder in the context of downtown to support those pathways, you will be bringing us any policy recommendations like 20 miles per hour downtown, no right on red downtown. Um, I, I'm wanting to see, you know, the, the, the spatial, physical aligned with the policy. And so can you speak to how that will be a part of this, please? And Brad, you can chime in too, but I know that it will, inf in addition to having the, you know, laying out the high level and the plan, we're also working through our complete streets manual that will address a lot of these things. And Brad, do you want to add? Yeah, I will say as far as operations, yes, we will be coming for, before you for policy changes with result of the operations of these facilities that will be put in place as part of our short-term and long-term, short, mid-range and long-term plans that actually come out of the Connect Downtown study. Okay, I appreciate that. I guess what, you know, I mean, obviously there are, you know, particular to any intersection because a multimodal lane is there or a transit lane is not so that's why you don't have right on red there mm -hmm. um, but I wonder within the zone I mean is the intent to take piece by piece by piece or to say okay you know what this is downtown it's walkable it's multimodal this is what we're trying to do here and so it is all 20 miles per hour down here like I, I you know I, street by street by street by street, by street, by street, by street I just I want to like let's just deal with the whole thing is my hope yeah, we're not going to do it piecemeal. Um, we're going to come before you with these recommendations as a whole, and they're in the different stages of that when we phase out the deployments of these. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I think we need a specific motion to defer to, uh, is that correct, to extend the curve more That's toward correct. the May 2023. So is anyone willing to make that motion, please? It's, it's to extend the current moratorium we have in place. We have a first. I'll second that, uh, Chair, if I may, and okay. then have a question. Okay, we have, that. we always allow questions after a first and a second. All right, so we have a first and a second. Your question, Councilman. Um, I, you know, I, I think we heard a fair amount of concern when we considered this the the first time and I guess I would just like to understand how you all have been effectuating this I mean mm -hmm. what kind of the practical implications have been um, I respect and appreciate that staff you know has some discretion rightly so um, can you just sort of speak to how this has been going I guess yes. is what I'd like to understand yes I, we can speak to that so we have been getting questions, obviously. We have 10 right now that have applications that have come in that are we are holding until we get get forward and actually have these recommendations and go go forward. So we have 10 currently now in the queue that have come in. And, and um, are those valet stands or a combination? Combination or kind of, of valet and yes. And the other is? Four valet. Four, four valet, valet and the other ones are Six what? are loading, just passenger and et cetera. Okay, thank you. So we have first and a second. Any other comments, questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The moratorium's been extended. Thank you. All right. Next item is 
7.01, trap sidewalk bending regulations and new restrictions limit. I think we're looking for removal of some conflicting language with new ordinance, but does not include an update on a pilot vending program at this time. That's the language in the agenda. Mr. Odom. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think they're working on it. Uh, we had a couple other things queued up, 60302 and 60303, but for the sake of time, I think we got the motion and we can... There will be many opportunities for us to give you more information about Connect Downtown. So with 701, uh, Corby, if you'll uh, pull up the uh, sidewalk vending regulation edits um, that are, I think, blue lined in your, your version. And I'll just speak to some of the changes that we've made until he pulls it up. Uh, so there were terms that were used in this regulation, your your regulation, that conflicted with the ordinance regulations, like terms for stand and terms for right away and all sorts of terms. So I just copied and pasted the ordinance terms into your regulation. Uh, the other thing I did was I removed our some of our restriction area wording and just basically reference the ordinance wording for the restrictions. Now, one change I did make uh, with uh, the restriction language, if you go down to section seven, six or seven, I can't remember now. Um, yep, yeah, here, yes. section seven. So I referenced in uh, bullet A, uh, the reference to section 130804 of the code. Um, there was a little bit of the language that was unclear, and this has been a problem on the street um, with citations. Uh, the intent uh, originally was to include Union Street sidewalks and 8th and Korean Veterans yeah. Boulevard as not only a boundary, but also not having vending on those streets. Uh, that was not spelled out very clearly in the ordinance. So you can add to the restrictions in the ordinance, but you cannot take away. So what I have here is um, I have 1308.04B6BI. I don't know how to say that in lawyer lingo, uh, attorney lingo, but restricted area will include bounding street sidewalks on Union Street, 8th Avenue, and Korean Veterans Boulevard. And that kind of includes it. The other thing, too, I have included is see the attached map depicting this area, which this commission adopt pursuant to uh, a lot of words there. And uh, so that map, I don't know, if Corby, if you have it, but it's similar to the map that the police, and it was also on the news release. What I did do with that map is I added a note kind of explaining on the border on Union and 8th and Veterans Boulevard. The sidewalks are included in that restriction. Uh, yep, yeah, in, in the uh, bottom left corner, which just basically says what was just in the regulation that was added. Um, so this is the map that's, that's going around and I just added this note. And that's what we have, just really packaging this map and updating your regulation not to conflict with the ordinance. And uh, and we did have a little in parentheses in the uh, agenda that we, we were not ready to have the pilot program presented to you at this meeting. Okay. But that is something that we are working on. Um, and that's all we have right now. Okay. Are you requesting any action at this moment? To be clear. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because we want this motion uh, to be moved and approved so that we can actually post this regulation and the ordinance and, and everything else online so everyone can see it. See it. So and there's the clarity. Clarity. And for the police, for vendors, okay. for everyone. All right. So you're looking for a motion to approve the draft guidelines? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wait just, wait just a minute, please. I see your hand in the back. Wait just a minute. We'll take comments in a moment. Okay. Yes, you're going to 
Um, I, I guess I had some questions, Chair, so I'm, I'm not prepared to uh, make a motion myself at this time, but I don't know if we want to hold discussion until the yeah. motion is made. I'd, okay. I was trying just to understand what staff was looking for, and I knew you had a comment. Okay. All right. Who is here in the audience who wants to speak to this matter? Okay. You in the back. Is there anyone else? I don't miss anyone this time. Please stand up so I can see you. Okay. If you would step forward and state your name for the record. So, Welcome back. I know you've been here before. Chair? Yes. With, with all due respect, I guess I'm, I'm wanting to, I mean, I would perhaps like to pose my questions respectfully first, but I, I didn't know if you well, wanted to have I a want motion to try first to or you want to get... Com I just okay. want to get his comments on what's been discussed and then we can have comments. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay. You would step forward, please, sir. Uh, my, my name is Matthew Edwards. Um, I'm with Date Night Vending. Um, this is in re relation to Appendix A, which was the map that was approved in July through this uh, this committee. Um, that was kind of the word of record. Um, a, a map was created during the process at the Metro Council meeting. Uh, before the third reading of a bill that was never removed from consent, uh, a new map was created and just is now what's been passed out. Um, it hasn't gone through you all. Um, I have received several tickets because the map of Appendix A does not match this. Um, there are areas that are not included in the approved map, Appendix A. <clears throat> including uh, Korean Veterans Boulevard. Um, the language within the ordinance does state specifically between uh, Union and KVB. Um, the, the language that is, I guess, being proposed is to make everything inclusive of that area and, I guess, ignore the, the previously approved map. Um, and that's great. If you guys want to approve a map, that's what the ordinance says. You all can approve a new map. But that was not the case. Um, as soon as that ordinance was signed, um, it was enforced that day. Um, without, this is the map. Get your stuff. Let's go. Um, and, and honestly, the, the clarity is really difficult because of there's a private police force that's operating within the entertainment district that I don't even know who they are, but um, they're not Metro and they're not a representatives of the Traffic and Parking Commission or NDOT. So I'm not really sure if they're the ones that are supposed to be interpreting this or how they're supposed to do it, but it's kind of a, a mess. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Mr. Freeze, do you have some comments to add? Sure. So the ordinance that went through council, it, it defined a restricted area as per what came from traffic and licensing. The map was not part of that that came before as part of, there was no map as in, within the ordinance itself. It was just the restricted area. So now that we've gone through and actually passed the ordinance, this is our time to come back and update the traffic and parking policy to reflect the ordinance. We have provided a map based on the interpretation of the ordinance to actually assist and support the, the vending and also the Metro Nashville PD to enforce that. So that's, that, this is the kind of the order of operations, if, if, uh, if that makes sense of where we're going through. So we could not actually come back and update these traffic and parking regulations until the ordinance has passed in there because we were, you know, if things have changed as part of the ordinance, we would have to then go back and update that, the regulations again. So we have not, this map has come out as based on interpretation of the ordinance. So what you're hearing from, from Jason is when the ordinance was in effect, we, we drew the boundaries on there and then the those boundaries represent the sidewalks within those boundaries as well. So that's what kind of what we're clarifying as part of uh, that interpretation within these policies. So we're not real, there's not 
I wouldn't say there's a lot of addition uh, to what's in the ordinance. It's just ex expounding on that, what's in the ordinance. I, I don't know, if, Teresa, you want to you wanna chime in here too? Yes, legal counsel. Sure. Um, so I, I will read you the text of um, uh, 1308040B6B, which speaks to this. It says the sale of goods or services by street vendors is limited to the DTC and CF zone districts, provided, however, that no such sales may occur in the area, little letter I, between Union Street and Korean Veterans Boulevard, spanning from the Cumberland River to 8th Avenue, or Symphony Place between 3rd Avenue South and 4th Avenue South, or the John Siegenthaler Pedestrian Street Bridge. Additionally, vending is not allowed to occur in the portion of the street designated for vehicular traffic, including those permitted for a special event. These no vending areas may be created or enlarged by the commission upon reasonable public notice and specific notice to current permit holders. Notwithstanding the above and to the extent consistent with public safety, the Traffic and Parking Commission has the authority to establish a pilot vending program within any area previously described in section B6B above as no vending or otherwise. I'm sorry, you do have the ability to expand the area designated by council. In this case, as Mr. Freeze was explaining, we think the only expansion is really sort of a technicality to kind of capture the intent despite the inartful wording of the word between that they didn't mean like from the like southernmost um, edge of um, uh, the KBV street itself to the northernmost edge of the um, uh, Union Street itself. So, yeah. I mean, like, like those a outside line issue. sidewalks yeah. would also be included within the prohibited area. Um, these are draft rules, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so they would be posted, and then what would happen? What's the plan after that, please? Uh, I would I would say with I mean we've done a media release already I mean I think it would be appropriate to also say the traffic and parking commission has you know updated their regulations and this is the map that was approved uh, that also agrees or in addition to the ordinance restriction area <laughs> it includes the sidewalks on Union 8th and and KVB. Uh, but I'm, we're happy to take recommendations from the commission. Okay. Does anyone want to move forward with a motion? So moved. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's very expeditious. There you go. Uh, and would you like to make a motion, please? Approved. What would you, is your motion to approve the draft recommendation as presented? Sure. Okay, so we have that motion. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, there's no, okay, there's no second to that motion. Okay, For, can we get some further discussion, please? Yes, council member. Thank you. Um, I, I think, um, you know, as, as the, sponsor of the ordinance colleagues, right? Because something moves through here and then as the council member, then I carry that legislation on the council side. And, you know, I will say in bills of this size, despite best efforts, sometimes that precision of language. So, um, you know, I, I do appreciate from staff's perspective, this is housekeeping, um, but I am also mindful, um, you know, that there are challenges when we codify a particular area and the intent was giving this uh, commission the authority, um, you know, to 
adjust that as needed within certain notice provisions. And so I know, you know, subsequent to the passage at council, um, there were um, some community concerns expressed at that time from um, vendors in attendance as to kind of our, our, our process chair, right? Because we have, you know, we, we have the hearings on this side at commission and then, you know, first, second, third reading of an ordinance. There's not a public hearing on the council side. Um, and I think there, there was some understandable confusion among the vendor community about that. Um, and so, you know, the, the commitment that I made to um, th those folks who were concerned subsequent to third reading was um, that I would be in touch with staff to kind of understand what are the next steps. And so um, by way of kind of context and what we choose to do now, I think it's important to understand precisely kind of what has been done up to this point, because, um, you know, there's, there's passage of the ordinance. And then as I expressed, when we had that call, um, uh, there's, there's notice, uh, chair. And so I, I just want to, um, understand um, from an enforcement perspective and the confusion that the, the boundaries, you know, KVB or otherwise have created, um, kind of how that's sort of come up, you know, when, when were folks given the new map? When was enforcement put in place? Um, when did this uh, discrepancy um, or confusion come to light? And then subsequent to that, what notice has been given how is that aligned or not, Ms. Costonis, with um, our, our process is codified? Like if, if we could just sort of lay it out like that, because I can't make a motion until I understand all that to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Okay. So draft rules, they would get posted. Um, and so what's the, the current enforcement of the ordinance passed by council? I think that would actually be in your standing rules, which was previously addressed. Um, isn't there a provision in there, Jason, about amendment of the rules, about how the commission can amend its own rules? Okay. Well, Just, I think my, my question is... Not, not is, that one, the standing rules. Are, are, is the ordinance as passed by the council, is it currently being... Enforce. What's the enforcement? So, and how is that working? Right. So, as Brad said, the the um, the ordinance itself, um, which is um, uh, BL twenty twenty three sixteen forty seven, amending chapters six one point oh six point one oh four thirteen oh eight and thirteen thirty two of the Metropolitan Code. So um, that um, did not have a map as an exhibit to it when it passed. There were some maps that were circulating around like for information, but it wasn't like a part of the ordinance. Um, however, the, um, the code provision says um, in 1308040B6BI um, that the Traffic and Parking Commission shall have the authority to publish and enforce all such other re regulations related to vending street performers and other temporary sidewalk encroachments as shall be necessary to effectuate this section and to ensure the free, free flow of pedestrian traffic and vehicular traffic and to ensure the safety of the public, including designating appropriate clearances around other features of the public right of way, such as intersections, disabled parking spaces, fire hydrants, parking meters, loading zones, bus stops, building entrances, and the like. In so doing, the commission may adopt a map or maps showing location where vending is prohibited and or where it is permitted. So you all do have the authority to adopt regulations adopting a map. And you all had, um, if you will go back to the, the green and blue um, marked up one, the red, yeah, that red line. Um, so, What's in 7A, that is, that is a part of your rules. That's the language that um, is being changed. See the attached map depicting this area, which the commission adopts pursuant the, to the authority to adopt a map showing locations where vending is prohibited and or where it is permitted as is provided for in the section that I just read to you. Um, so 
I think by adopting this map with that language changing your rules, um, you are effectively um, uh, expanding the area of the no vending zone, which you also have the authority to do upon um, reasonable notice and specific okay. notice. Okay, well, my, my question, let, let me please, my question is, I think what we're, we're Maybe I'm hung up on the wrong word, but I get a sense that we're being asked to post draft rules, not final rules. And is that correct, Mr. Odom? Because I think a draft rules is being posted and then there's opportunity to get feedback and then we would consider final rules. I guess that's kind of what, as I read this, that's what I had in mind of the process that we had. Yeah, I mean, I think the intent here was actually to, this is draft to you, but ultimately if you approved, it becomes something that is effective. Uh, I think the reason being, we did just didn't want to add to the confusion where somebody's holding the new ordinance, somebody pulls up this regulation and they don't agree. And, and then we have, you know, more tickets being issued, unfortunately, in areas you know, where they maybe shouldn't be issued by NDOT or MNPD. So we were trying to quickly fix that issue and not delay this. And, and that's why we were basically just, just doing term updates and referencing the code and adding a map. We didn't really want to do too much change to this so that it, it wouldn't be some massive overhaul of your regulation. It really is just trying to align the, the ordinance that was passed, the new ordinance with your regulation and continue our efforts to, to make so, this so the larger, major, more the major change, change. The major change here is really clarifying the definition really of between, I mean, of what, yeah. between union and, and KVB. Because yes. you know, we're getting calls from vendors, you know, hey, where do I, where can I set up? You know, I'm, I'm on union and I'm getting tickets and and then we went back to the ordinance and it, it, the wording between is okay. there and and well, a lot of the conversations it was it was implied union eighth and, and KVB would also be yeah. off limits so it just so just didn't catch I, that. I was not at the council meetings when this was considered so I cannot speak to the legislative intent the council member can and um, I I think. What I'm trying to get clarity on, Chair, is, you know, I, I think what I hear staff saying is, you know, this is happening in a housekeeping space. Um, and, you know, I am always wary of kind of codifying maps, <laughs> particular exclusion zones for, for just this reason. And um, while I will say that, you know, my understanding was that KVB Union 8th, that the exclusion zone was inclusive of those streets. I do acknowledge that there is an imprecision of language that has created a, a misunderstanding. And so I think, I think maybe we... And, and Ms. Castone is responding to your subsequent question, Chair. I'm not sure if I got my initial question fully addressed um, by, by Mr. Freeze because I need to understand from a fairness perspective, you know, what has been communicated um, to vendors, what we are obligated to do, um, you know, whether precisely codified or just in the spirit of kind of fairness and fair notice and, and so forth. So, um, you know, I'm wanting to understand, you know, what has been and how it has been shared with all the current permit holders and um, uh, to determine, I mean, I respect and appreciate that, you know, kind of in this moment um, for, for clarity and um, due to imprecision, uh, you know, we, we don't want this to lag another um, uh, month. But by the same token, I, I'm a, a little bit wary of whether we have provided due notice um, 
for this. I mean, it, it is spring break. I was, I'm wanting you to kind of speak to when were vendors notified about this change, and that's going to help me, yes. Chair, determine, um, right. you know, whether or not to proceed with this housekeeping as proposed or bifurcate this motion to get the language updated per the ordinance, but changing the street boundaries, perhaps taking that separately. Um, and if from a notice provision, Ms. Castonis, right. I don't know if we've met kind of our standing rules notice provision on that. So um, if, if Mr. Uh, Freeze could respond to my earlier questions and then the notice right. provision, maybe Ms. Castonis. Okay. And then maybe you can speak too to the issue of if the map got separated out from the rest of the rules. Right. So when the ordinance was passed, you know, a couple of weeks later, there was actually a signing uh, of the ordinance that was on a Friday. So when that ordinance was signed, there was notice that it went out as part of a press release to, to the public, but also there was a handout that was provided to Metro Nashville PD to distribute to vendors uh, who would be receiving citations as part of the action of the new ordinance. In that, in that handout. Point of clarification, if, if I can, Chair, because there's a lot of things here. Notice was provided to vendors, and so there's public notice, right? Like right. the mayor is signing this, this mm -hmm. is effective, mm -hmm. but did every permit holder get an email, get a mailing, or is it just MNPDs out in the street enforcing and sharing at that time? My expectation or understanding was that every permit holder would be notified prior to the effectiveness or date of it. So I just, can you speak to right. that? Right. So, go ahead. So I I I, I reached out, emailed. Um, well, we did this ahead of time, not on that Friday, but reached out to those involved in the uh, committees, uh, stakeholder committees. But there, we did not have the emails, and I'm not. I cannot confirm if the if the if the clerk sent out uh, a notice or not. Um, I think in their system that they're using. I don't. I think it strips the emails and it only leaves the addresses. So to send out like a quick notice would be difficult in that time frame. And and the police when they were going out in our meetings, it was more of a informing and trying to get compliance of of vendors moving, and and that was the intent, not to just write up a citation immediately when they saw somebody vending. It was here, you know, this is you know, what the new law is, we're letting you know, you know, please move to the outside this restricted area. I, I'm wondering if it makes more sense based maybe on the vibe I'm getting, if it makes more sense to defer this action for a month so we can get answers to all the questions about notification, get clarity about the map, what map is floating around, what map, et cetera. So, uh, council member, what's your sense? Um, Chair, I think just for purposes of discussion, there are additional um, uh, housekeeping language items particular to the ordinance referring back to this. So if we could, Ms. Castonis, I would like to kind of bifurcate this motion. So if we can first just take the housekeeping that aligns, again, not particular to the map or the boundaries, just to be clear, just wording, housekeeping, clarifications, not to include the word between KVB union, okay? That is not part of my motion. It's just everything basically but that. Um, and if we could take that up, um, uh, for a uh, uh, passage, and then I need a little more time to think about the, the map. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, have we articulated that clearly enough for a motion, Ms. Costonis? I think that you can articulate a motion to bifurcate the the separate amendments uh, to the rules. Um, as to whether you're going to take um, the subsection on your screen that's seven um, A. A if that's going to remain unmodified at this time and then subsequently um and but but the other changes the deletions from a through okay. d Count. um would be would be um 
adopted. I, but um, do you, did the council member want me to answer her question about the notice provisions as well? I, I think that would be helpful. I might find that more helpful to the the second piece. So basically the section 7A that we're going to kind of uh, cut off, then the notice questions would be particular to that. Please. So. Okay. So the, the, the notice provisions are, there is actually kind of two, I think, depending on what you're talking about. Because you said the notice provisions in the standing rules. And the one I was really reading to you is not from the standing rules. It's from the, um, the code as amended by the bill. So it's from 1308040B6B as amended by BL 2023-1647. And in the notice language in that says that the no vending areas may be created or enlarged by the commission upon reasonable public notice and specific notice to current permit holders. So that may have been what you were thinking about. Um, if we could go back to, do you have a um, visual for item 6.0 on the agenda? That would be standing rules. Right, because I think the question comes like when we say things like reasonable public notice, but we don't say X number of days. So, yeah, there we go. There are, the, there are the standing rules that you previously adopted the amendments on. So if you scroll down a little bit, I think there's something about adoption of rules or amending of rules. Oh, wait, too far. Go back up. <laughs> Okay. None of the standing rules of order shall be amended or repealed except by affirmative vote of two thirds of the members of the commission. In the consideration of any particular matter, any or all of the rules may be suspended by the unanimous consent of those present. So that's what your standing rules say to amendment of rules. And now having said that, it does specify that that is about the standing rules. And the um, traffic and parking um, sidewalk encroachment regulations are kind of a separate set of regulations that you all have adopted pursuant to the authority granted to you in 1308-040, which you have always had. It's just recently been amended. So we're trying to make it consistent with those amendments accomplished by um, uh, BL 2023-1647. So Chair, if I may, Ms. Kostunas, are you suggesting that per item 12, if needed, one could suspend the rule. Like, I, I don't think the commission, all due respect, in adopting these standing rules, um, uh, I, I understood that provision, the second sentence in uh, now section 12, to mean particular to these rules themselves, um, not what we hold ourselves to. I mean, I, I appreciate that notice, um, uh, is uh, w w the rules speak to notice how specifically? So I, I guess that's that's kind of my question. So the um, standing rules don't actually speak to notice at all. The provision that speaks to note to notice is the provision um, from the Metropolitan Code itself as most recently updated by BL 2023-1647. And that says that reasonable public notice and specific notice to current permit holders will be sent um, upon a creation or expansion of additional no vending area. Okay. okay, and but what we're hearing from Mr. Oldham, particular to um, notice, is that uh, as presently administered by the county clerk, they have, they do not have emails, um, and that were were these current permit holders mailed to, or it was just they, they have emails on the forms, but when they put them into the software that they're using, what okay. I've been told from Ronnie is is that some of that information does not get into that software because when he exported it and sent it to me, it was like stripped. Okay, so. Um, they probably do have the emails in 500 forms uh, somewhere in a box. Um, uh, I think traditionally they mail. Uh, so if, okay. if we wanted to do a, a notice 
or the county clerk wanted to do a notice, you know, it would take a week or so to. Yeah, I think I, I am just, colleagues, I'm in an awkward position because my understanding subsequent to the passage of the ordinance is that every current permit holder would be okay. informed uh, as to the updates relative to the ordinance. And I, I'm not disputing staff making their best efforts through the stakeholder groups and otherwise and through MNPD uh, and by way of whatever. Like, so I'm, I'm not criticizing, but I, I am somewhat uncomfortable um, that, you know, we, we have made a pretty big change and that we we need to do that with all kind of transparency and clarity. Okay. I also appreciate that this is a clarity providing amendment. So, um, Chair, if I may, again, in separating those two things, Ms. Yes. Pistonis, not particular to the map between KVB Union, I, I just want to kind of set that aside as one thing. On the language housekeeping updates, is there any concern that anything, if so, if we're bifurcating this, is there any concern that that housekeeping, that language change is, is again, beyond housekeeping, is something that would require a level of notice that one might expect for the map itself. Do you see what I'm saying? Like in trying to split that, I think it's appropriate now, based on my understanding and reading, that we take that and do that and pass that at this time. Yes. And that, you know, I'm not saying we shouldn't also pass the suggestion relative to the map at this time, colleagues. I just want to separate them. I mean, because that, that is doable because the provision about notice in the code as amended by the bill is specific to creation of new areas of no vending and enlargement of the area of no vending. Okay. So it, it, to the extent any other provision of the amendment that's on the screen right now does not address those issues, they would not be implicated in that notice requirement. Okay, okay. that's so, what I'm trying to get at, thank you. So I think that's been clarified. So do you have a motion, please? Yes, um, I would move approval of um, the uh, housekeeping items as suggested by staff to create alignment between the ordinance as passed and um, the previous uh, draft rules. Um, to effectuate uh, an update to our rules per the ordinance. <laughs> Do you want to make an exclusion to 7A? Um, yes, thank you. Um, excluding uh, uh, at this time, uh, 7A. Thank okay. you, Chair. Right. Okay. Okay. So the map is referred to in A. Is that correct? Yes, okay. And I apologize. So um, a, a community member has shared. There's is there a concern relative I think to there, something? Here's, I think the concern six. from the audience, and I would, well, I appreciate comments from the audience. I appreciate that you have opportunity to speak. Okay. Uh, at public notice. So is there a concern about? I think it was C seven C, which refers to six point three two. I think it's clear from the motion that we are excluding the map. Is that your understanding, Ms. Costonis? Um, yes. Um, I, I will add that Section 6.32, as referenced, already exists. And it already, um, basically, the sections of that chapter basically um, define an area surrounding many venues, such as Municipal Auditorium, um, the Music City um, Center, okay. um, uh, Convention Center, um, and others um, to um, say that there is no vending allowed in the streets adjacent to those structures while there is an event ongoing in those venues. Okay. So um, I think that a lot of KVB would probably front the Music City Convention Center and they probably pretty much always have an event going on in there. So as far as 632 is concerned, vending in front of the um, convention center would already be prohibited okay. by 632, which was adopted a long time ago and is yeah. not a part of okay. either of these recent amendments. Oh, so we but the other portions of KVB or union that are not like in front of a venue that's mentioned in chapter 632 would not be impacted oh, by that. So I think we have a very clear motion. 
Yes. All right. So is there a second to that motion? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. I do have one question yes, to that. Um, it was mentioned that, you know, fines are being given out because of this um, mis- however it's it's explained or whatnot how, how are we enforcing that and addressing that and are we refunding those because I, I do feel like it's slightly unfair that if there's an error here to where we're enforcing something that's described wrong they're getting fined that, that, yeah that so i can speak to that so that we've actually had a discussion with metro national pd with regard to that and with Teresa Constones was involved as well so we are uh recommending to throw those out that are you know until we have this clarified in there in and that, but with that between language that then that'll be about. frozen I, I would assume until, until we, we have this, this map yeah okay yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable Just your, yes okay i appreciate right. that thank so, you commissioner Mason. All right. that's a good question thank you commissioner all right so we have a first and a second is there any further discussion all in favor aye any opposed all right so now we're clear we got that part done uh is there Concerning the map, which I think is a little more complicated and in and uh, in lieu of the time, and I know we have an item, there's one item here relating to bagging that I know, I think somebody's been, a couple have been sitting here patiently waiting that I would like to address. I would strongly suggest that we defer the map till next meeting because I think that all the issues have been brought up and then we can get some clarity, make sure it's published. So there's no lack of clarity. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make a motion to defer that item. Okay, to next. we have a motion to defer. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, there you go. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, in the interest of time, let's, I, I know there's a couple that have probably got more civic lessons than they ever wanted. Uh, Concerning uh, item 7.04, which is a meter bag request for an event that's held at the end of March. Uh, staff or director, y'all have any comments concerning this request, please? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So in this particular item, this was sent to us after the agenda had actually been distributed, so we apologize for the welcome, but the event that they're requesting would not would come before your next meeting. Uh, what we are, they are requesting uh, for us to bag meters, and in the past, the practice was that we would bag the meters and we would then not charge them the fees for the bag. And since this is late notice and we are in the midst of changing our practice, we wanted to request that this year that you would actually consider waiving those fees when we bag these meters and then next year we would actually let them know that they would have to purchase the meters to be bagged. So it's just trying to be fair because we're in the middle of changing out our our parking um, program and policy. All right. Is there a motion to approve the recommendation as defined by the director? Uh, motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a second. Any discussion? Uh, just a quick question for um, the director. It's, so before, um, I, I assume, given all the streets, is, is this a festival of some sort or? This or? is an event that they actually hold annually up at okay. the um, hill. Okay. And I, I guess my question comes because, colleagues, we had this question in the past, right, about kind of getting ourselves to a place where you know, kind of fairness and right. this nonprofit, not that we weren't per picking favorites for any particular event. I, I guess as I had understood subsequent to that, we were going to have, again, in a space of kind of notice and information. Um, I think we all recognize we're in transition on a lot of things that we're doing here and we want to uh, uh, land on the side of, 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 of fairness. Right. Um, but can you speak to for these things that are annual events, where are we on the communication on so that? We have, um, we have posted this on our website and made people aware, but not everybody looks at it. There's kind of been this standard practice. So uh, this was one of those situations and we felt it, it would be fair to consider waiving for this year. And then they would be informed for next year to know for sure. But we are bringing back before y'all in June, if you remember, we owe you in the month of June, all of the requests for whatever fees we feel would be waived. So it is really, we're anticipating by that time we would be having 
I would not see coming forth asking for a request because the notice would have been out for a significant amount of time. We're doing our best to inform. We're trying to gather information. Unfortunately, we don't have really great information about past inf uh business so some of it is a bit surprised and we just given the circumstances the fact that who this is to um supporting the association it's supporting everything we felt it was worth concerning for this year but then they would be informed for next year that they would have to they still could do the bagging but they would have to pay for the fees okay i appreciate that and thank you chair i think we've seen a bit of a refrain through several items that we've had before us communication yeah right getting that data getting that information getting and we're really trying yep. but we are a little bit I hate to say it, but we just don't have Twixed great information um, from the past that kind of helps us provide that to folks and say, hey, we can't, we or will not, that kind of stuff. So if we are you have where we feel there's an communication, avenue. it's hard to relate that. Correct. But in where we have, but now we are putting it out, we have made it known, people are aware. We've had this, you know, uh, some opportunities to share it out in some of the news media blast as well. So we do feel like it's getting out, but there are a few circumstances that are a little bit different. And because of the shortness of the time window here, we appreciate the opportunity to walk this on and for your consideration. Commissioner Rob. Uh, just really quickly, what are all the modes of communication? Is it just strictly on the website or do you do social media pr releases for yes, anything we, that we're social doing. media we're also handling on the website if we do run across a, um, an email or something that catches our attention it's like oh they've done bag meters we should send them notice we're sending that out so we're really trying to get as much information out as we can but definitely have been putting out through social media about the program also put out about that will be uh that we're the, the new policy we've posted that as well and made people aware of the policy that y'all have passed when it comes to fees and who gets that and who doesn't get that because that is a policy all of our actually already um, have set. So when people, when I actually have a lot of folks that come to me and, and they say, hey, you know, we're used to getting this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, but here's the policy. Here's what it has said and everything. But this kind of puts them in a financial crunch of being able to host the program. And um, it's um, it's not as significant amount as, as, you, as we would like to think it is. Um, but again just given the shortness of the time not aware we didn't have any information about this we just feel like and given that june's our new date and we feel that that's ample time we felt like it, we could bring this before y'all for consideration this year only yeah and right. i think in follow-up to ms robbins if i can just say i mean I, I hope you all are creating like specific um constituency emails right so it's one yes. thing to kind of subscribe to the end dot newsletter and hope you get that through kind of osmosis and quite another thing to be On you know, we are a nonprofit that has engaged in right. requesting this and so that you know there's specific emails to that cohort whether they be vendors whether they be nonprofits, yes. uh, you know for runs okay. and all that kind we of stuff. we are pulling all that information together <laughs> as uh, we move forward we we have a first and a second is there any further discussion all in favor Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Your bagging policy has been approved. Good luck with your meeting. Okay. 7.02 is a draft no parking policy. Mr. Odom. Mr. Odom. Yeah, I think we're trying to pull that up here. Um, this is not it. I think it's a Word document or PDF, probably Word. Uh, but I, I can talk talk on this until Corby finds it. Um, we were trying to provide some clarity on when we go out and um, when we post no parking signs on one side of the street or both sides. Um, You'll notice driving around Nashville, sometimes you can barely get through a street and it's even harder for emergency vehicles to get through the street uh, when you have parking on both sides on a narrow roadway. And so we, we wanted to put in very simple terms a policy and also a table. Corby, if you'll uh, scroll down just a little bit. There you go. And this table really just tries to make sure note one at the bottom, um, we maintain that 12 foot passage for emergency vehicles and, um, you know, considering an eight foot parking space width. 
uh, for one-way traffic and for two-way traffic has a little bit different criteria. Uh, just for clarity for staff and if we have council members or HOAs or anybody calling, we can share this with them. Uh, but we wanted to definitely share it with you and uh, get your support for this policy. And I'll, I'll add one thing to, to Jason's comment. So uh, traffic and parking has already granted the department authority uh, per ordinance based on these these curb whips. What we're really coming before is just to show you an update of that policy. So it, it doesn't really require any kind of action by, by traffic and parking. We want to be transparent and show this update. One thing that I'll point out, uh, we are making uh, a change in our internal, pol on our NDOT policy with regard to the uh, the balloting and actually the going out there and receiving 70%. That was previously what we do in every case. In this case, we are actually making, making it to where we don't have to do that in terms of public safety. When there's an issue of public safety and access of emergency vehicles, That this was our own internal policy. We previously went out to get a petition signed with 70% or you know, 70% of those in affirmative to no parking on one side of the road. So this, this actually is changing our policy to say in, in terms of public safety, we're going to do that. Of course, the council member will be involved in that discussion as well when we go forward and do that. So I, I think that becomes my question a little bit in some of these policy pieces that have come through, and I appreciate us getting those in a place where they're, you know, visible by this commission, visible by the community, because there has been for, you know, years and years and decades and decades, right, kind of just mm -hmm. kind of back of house stuff um, that, right. uh, you know, staff just has to take time mm -hmm. explaining to the community and otherwise. So um, I... I I wonder though, as far as at the top, that sort of tick box of new issue versus, I found in some of them coming through, they they are clarifications or they are things that are already in place. And so when we identify them as a new issue, I think maybe that kind of creates- Confusion. Confusion or concern in the community. Like, oh my gosh, is this a whole new thing? Like, it, as opposed to sort of formalizing, you know, policy is currently implemented or amending it. And so I, I just wanted to kind of cue staff to that because I've been getting a little bit of feedback that there's somewhat of a lack of understanding in the way that we are identifying these kind of on our agenda. Like when you click, you know, X new issue as this does at the top, people are like, oh, this is from kind of, you know, just kind of from nothing brand new. We need to right. pay. I mean, we we all need to pay close attention to all these things. I'm not saying that, but um, so I, I guess um, I I am comfortable with this. I think the only question I had was a clarifying question about I support and appreciate the safety and the access, the 12 foot as codified, because I know over time sort of best practice around lane width, right? We have a lot of conversations, um, whether it's, um, uh, uh, NACTO guidelines or otherwise about, you know, 10 foot travel lanes, um, what the import of that is on our speeding. I get that this is related to on-street parking, but I, I become a little wary of us, uh, whether codifying or formalizing a policy, um, that things have to be 12 feet. Um, I, I, I get it in the context of safety and I don't want to diminish that concern. Right. But can you speak to Ms. Castonis where the 12 foot is in code? And if we formalize it in this policy, does that create a kind of knock on effect when for other street lanes, we want to reduce to 11, we want to reduce to 10, because sometimes we need to do that to reduce speeding and provide multimodal provisions. So um, I, I just want to understand, does this have any implications beyond yeah I think item this B, is a rule I think item B right here per chapter 124007 a metro code no one shall park any vehicles on the street in any way that leaves less than 12 feet so I think that was what we were using is just to make sure that we have 12 feet okay and so that is only particular to parking right we're, we're not painting it's ourselves clearance. into a corner yeah as far as precedent setting on having 11 foot lanes 10 foot lanes in other contexts Okay. This, this is correct. a rule, correct? And this rule can be modified. It can be, yes. Okay. So this is like I, a like a fire truck with a ladder, you know, and the attachments on side. That's what we're trying. That's what we're after here. Is here, providing that appropriate amount of clearance for that. Okay. 
Okay, right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's been approved. Uh, but before we go, uh, I'm not sure if this will be your last meeting or not, Commissioner uh, Robbins, Karen, because you've served for five years and your term is up and you've had so much fun <laughs> yeah. that you decided not to... Uh, uh, I thought you were going to be here through April. April. But yeah, April, she's got one but, more. So just, but I just want to make, you know, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not trying to kick anybody out, but I'm not sure. Sometimes the dates are April 4th, sometimes they're a thing. But, but, but I do, before, I just want to acknowledge your service oh, thank you. very much. And uh, you're a, uh, involved in the community through your transportation company and I also know from first-hand experience that you are a wonderful boss the reason why I know is that both a niece and a nephew of mine have worked for Miss Robbins in the past and uh, I know that uh, she's one and, and like all commissioners who end up serving it seems like we all become friends and uh, you always feel like when someone rotates off that uh, you're, you're kind of missing a friend that you don't see as often as you would like to see. So I just want to, I know we've had a long meeting, but I just want to get into the record in case we got busy in April or something that you were acknowledged for your service, your friendship, your dedication, for being present and for being a, a wonderful member of the community. So thank, thank you. you. Okay. All right. We have one more item, 7.03. What's that? Well, uh, I think we're going to postpone that. Okay. <laughs> because I think that was clear. All right. Officer. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. It's approved. <laughs> Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.